previously on the moto inside the outdoors if i have a chance this year compared to last year i keep hearing that in the end when you line up to the gate you have to step up and make it happen the idea was try to make two of the best motocross riders that the world's ever seen if he did it here then i got everything i need to be that number one guy outdoors is something that's missing ryan villapoto for example as an amateur never won a race it's just tony's pretty crazy villapoto jumped past him into the lead they don't have it he's a sprinter If there is an overwhelming tie that binds the sport of motocross, it's found in the bond between father and son. It is the undeniable motor that moves the entire community. Come on, let's go! A connection created early on between a parent teaching the unwritten lessons of his craft to a son who dreams of being a champion. Along the way, they are willing to sacrifice a life of their own for a life together, devote their entire existence to the sport they love and give up everything to just go racing. Pilot Point, Texas. One of the few places left in America where horses still outnumber people in terms of population. They say once you move to a small town, you'll never move back to a big city. When we first moved here, we raised horses. So we came here for that. And we fell in love with this place. The Wharton family settled into this rural town nearly 13 years ago. And Father Robert began teaching his sons, Blake and Tyler, the techniques of his other passion, motocross. Most of our focus was on Tyler at the tracks and the practices. Blake would kind of just do his own thing. As they got older, all of a sudden, a little kid over here just started going really fast. He'd been listening to all what we'd been teaching Tyler, and it wasn't directed at him, but he learned a lot from his brother. Youngest son Blake started racing at an early age and quickly rose through the amateur ranks with an impressive ease, collecting some of its most celebrated titles along the way. But the move to the pro class is filled with new challenges. Rougher tracks, longer motos, and experienced competition. So you guys grew up together the whole time, just in the same house? Well, we didn't adopt him until a couple years ago. We just seen him at the Taco Bell around town, and we're like, we have to adopt this little Mexican kid. The scientists look at my brother, and they say, Sasquatch is out there. Do you see any resemblance here with him in the caveman commercial? That might be true, but you're not far off of the caveman yourself. Uh, that's all you. The Neanderthal right here. Say it's a, it's, it's, it's a friendship, like buddies, kind of, because um, we joke around a lot. His girlfriend barely knows they're dating. Yeah. They <laughs> live so far apart. Well, that's one of his jokes. I all those senior citizen moments. <laughs> I just let that was fly. Hey! 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 What's going on with your sharks? Let me watch your technique. I don't know how you would explain that in terms of like fathers, brothers, friends, whatever, you know what I'm saying? I think we're more um, partners, you know? Me, the boys, even the girlfriend Danielle, we're all partnership. The structure of the Alessi family mirrors that of the Whartons. Two sons, both professional, and a father completely dedicated to their success. Yet their methods used in achieving that success differ completely. As amateurs, the deal was pretty clear. In order for us to eat, we had to win. None of us had jobs. We gave our whole entire existence to winning amateur races. People don't understand that because they didn't have to live it, but go cash in your job and say, I'm quitting because I have to go help my son become a top rider. Cash in your 401k, mortgage your house. When you do those things and you come to those races, it's not a matter of wanting to win, it's having to win. I would say that now we have a, a softer program 
in terms of coming to the race. We're not coming there to kill you, to beat you at all costs. We're coming there to ride our best race. If the win comes, it's because we had the best package. Bike's ready. Basically, it's been me and my dad traveling for the last year. I really think it takes one person, a parent, to be totally devoted to it. No matter what's happened, we've always kept our eye on the goal. We're simulating a race, so he's probably going to look for better lines and then probably try to do a couple more fast laps. The week off between races provides a brief amount of time to make adjustments in order to improve a rider's track speed. Time and speed are the crucial elements in racing. Where to lose one and find the other. For Blake Wharton, a top 10 overall finish at Glen Helen was respectable, but nowhere near the goal of a championship. Placing pressure on father and son to get faster and lose seconds, if they are to be considered serious challengers for the title. I try to be his friend and look at things maybe he doesn't see. When you guys were close, that was your fastest lap time by far. We've been successful for many years as amateurs and we work well together. I mean, at 20 years old, he's probably one of the premier riders in the world. That's a pretty big calling for a young rider. I don't think there's any mature 20 year olds. I think they might fake it pretty good. But at the end of the day, 20 year old, kid. You know, they're a kid. Drunk, stop. Wait, wait, just stop. From what? I think that it's critical to have someone around that holds the line. I don't know what happened. As soon as I came out of the turn, I just felt my knee. Turn. It happens. Go. Yeah, just go get the circle weights done. I'm gonna go get the start ready. The management of you know young athletes is a huge effort. It's a harder job than anything that has to do with motorcycle racing or training or any of that. Okay, do you <laughs> want to do qualifying time or you want to just go right into moto? You can do it today or you can do it tomorrow. If you're not gonna give a full effort today, then it's not worth it. You just need to buckle down and and figure it out and be tough, be mentally tough, and be a champion. Adding to the difficulty is the task of rebuilding a rider's confidence. For Mike Alessi, the defeat at Glen Helen was demoralizing. After a fast start, Mike raced to a huge early lead. These guys are going to have to do something quick as Mike Alessi's on a roll. Longtime rival Ryan Villapoto eventually tracked him down and passed him with a confident ease. And the checkered flag comes out and Villapoto flinching his fist. Leaving the Alessis with tension in their training program and a whole lot of work to do if they are to contend for the championship in the outdoors. What's going on? Sick. Huh? But it's because you hardly ate anything. It's like you don't understand. It's basic. You want to be soft or you want to be tough. It's simple. Right now you're being soft. It's going to make a difference. He's almost 18. He doesn't need me. He has the money to do anything he wants. But I'm lucky to have a kid like this that keeps me around and recognizes that I do bring something to the table. This last weekend, we got two top five starts, and that really reflected in our overall. So we're all about the start. You have different releases and different RPMs, different techniques. You just find something that works and then try to perfect it. And that's what we're here doing today, working on it. One error in technique is the difference between first and 15th. I mean, it's huge. I mean, it's the only place in the racetrack where you can pass 30 guys or 40 guys in eight seconds. You know what I'm saying? When those guys don't ride good, it's really frustrating for me. You can see I, just, I don't function right. At first glance, Tony Alessi and Robert Wharton are instructors, teaching from the opposite sides of the podium. One, an iron fist. Okay. You're not getting this figured out. What's wrong with you? The other, a loving embrace. How's the bike? Good. Yet to judge is to miss the point completely. 
At their core, there are simply two men driven by a devotion few will ever understand. You understand, I'm not leaving here until you have five starts, five whole shots. And it's within that feeling their teachings run parallel, and ultimately they share a common bond. The same common bond that connects the sport of motocross. You know what? I'm getting mad now. Got roost at that time. We're not going. You understand? We're not going. You did a good job of keeping the motor revs up that time, even though you were kind of off balance. Dude, you have so many problems. It's just unlimited. Perfect. I'm not going to say that wasn't good. It's the Hangtown Motocross Classic celebrating 41 years of motocross racing. Beautiful sunshine here in California. Couldn't ask for anything better. The role of the race day mechanic is essential. His job, endless. I always say it's like, this is my bike. I just let Blake ride it, you know? Although his primary duty is that of the machine, there is no task too big or too small. He is the rider's most trusted friend, coach, and closest confidant. As well as his surveyor to the ever-changing racetrack. And of course, when needed, the mechanic is there for the day's positive affirmation. This sounds so stupid, but seriously, just go out there and ride like you're the best rider. That's all you gotta do. Just think, every time you're out there, I'm the best rider. I'm the best rider. It will carry you through. I'll tell you what, we're going to let the anticipation build because, folks, they're getting ready to fire it up. So, gang, we're underway here in Moto number one of the 250 division. One fifty-one of Justin Barsha is out front. All right, Blake's coming up on a big group. Hopefully he can get around. The number 61 battled through the pack after a poor start in Moto 1, but was unable to match the speed of the front runners which left Justin Barsha and Christoph Purcell to fight for the lead. Rodney, we may see a pass attempt on this lap. Folks, this is what you paid to see. They're drag racing in front of the mechanics area. Christoph Purcell is going to try to sweep them on the outside, and he gets the job done by going the long way around. Checkers are out, and Purcell will take the Moto win. Barsha, the rookie, will take second, less than one second behind him. So it's Purcell, Barsha, Kennard, one, two, and three. In the 450 class, shocking rumors of an injury to series leader Ryan Villopoto had been spreading all week. And an in-person look at his condition during practice put the villopoto alessi rematch in jeopardy. Doesn't look like Villopoto's racing today. What do you mean? It doesn't look like he's like racing. It looks like he's just riding. I heard maybe something happened with him during the week. I don't know. I, sometimes I'm hearing. Who do you think it is with the whole shot? Michael Essie. Watch him go. He's going into the checkout mode right now. And Ryan Villapoto is 39th position. Oh, and Mike goes down. Mike Alessi goes down. What a tough break for Alessi. The number 800 trying to get that machine picked up as these riders coming right at him. He's able to do so, but man, the traffic coming at him. That had to be tough. So it's Ivan Tedesco out front, Jeff Northrup, Cody Cooper, Justin Brayton, and Andrew Short, Michael Essie in sixth. So that is some damage control by the 800 of Michael Essie.
So a crazy, crazy opening series of events. What a beautifully executed pass by Alessi there as he gets around Andrew Short. So that should put Alessi back up into a top five ride now. Villapoto back in the number 30 position. You know, we heard he had a little bit of a tweaked knee possibly. Now Looks like Alessi's got around Cody Cooper. So Mike Alessi now moves into second place. Tedesco is now four seconds flat in front of Mike Alessi. Well, you got to wonder what's going through Alessi's head right now as he is beginning to smell blood. I believe that Tedesco's gone down and Ivan Tedesco has lost the spot. It is now Mike Alessi, rider number 800 from Victorville, California, on the rock star Makita Suzuki, and he has the advantage as he heads up into the Sky Coaster. He stalled the bike. He stalled the bike. Mike Alessi has stalled his bike. No harm. What the hell Locked are you doing, bike. dude? Put your hands together, California, for Mike Alessi taking the moto win in your 450 class. What am I going to say to him? Yeah. No mistakes in the next moto. Obviously, and fix that corner. And don't stall the bike. What about but, good moto? <laughs> yeah, probably a good moto. That was a good job. I think I already told him that. An outdoor national consists of two 30-minute motos for each class. The combined scores from both determine the overall winner, providing the mechanic with only a small window of time between the motos to make any needed adjustments to the machine. All right, let's try this again. Lots of energy in the first 20 minutes, big effort. And that'll push you out in front with those guys. Okay. Appears that everyone's through the corner and Ryan Dungey grabs the whole shot, rider number 10. I believe that is Blake Ward, rider 61, back in the number two spot. What a great start for the 61 of Blake Ward. Wharton is really on a rail in this second moto. Watch what's coming up behind him right now. It's the 377 of Christophe Purcell. From Kennard to Dungey, four seconds are all that separate four riders. In moto two, Blake Wharton redeemed himself with a second place start. Then the pack closed in on the rookie and applied pressure. But a poor choice of lines and an off-camber turn derailed his run for the podium. If you choose the wrong line coming out of that off-camber, you could cost yourself a couple of seconds real easy. And Wharton is back in fifth. Wow. So I told you, you make a mistake in that top four, and you are going to see a big hole of riders come blowing by you. And it looks like that's exactly what happened to Blake Wharton. You know, Blake just keeps making the wrong Wharton couldn't recover from his early mistakes and placed fifth in the moto and seventh overall. Ryan Dungey took the win, and Christoph Purcell's impressive showing in both motos earned him his first overall victory, placing Purcell and Dungey neck and neck for the series lead in the 250 class. Make sure you focus on like your whole start thing, like go over the whole thing. Think about the whole thing. As the 450 riders prepared for the final moto of the day, devastating news came from Team Kawasaki. Their factory rider Ryan Villapoto's injury is worse than expected, negating his anticipated rivalry with the Alessis. All I know is I saw the, the big Kawasaki semi driving out of here right now. That's not a good sign. Got a little bit of a gap over the rest of the field, and here comes Alessi trying to make the charge and the pass in for second. And how pumped up does he have to be right now with Villapoto out of this photo? 
Mike Gillespie trying to outdrag Ray Simon Tedesco. Tedesco on the inside. Mike Gillespie grabs a handful of Suzuki throttle. Bam! He goes into the number two spot. Chad Reed has caught Ivan Tedesco. Chad, I think, desperately wants to get around to Ivan because he can see the front two getting away. And uh, Was that Grant having some problems out there? And he may have lost the lead. Mike Gillespie goes to the inside. Well, Josh Grant just came back by yeah. Mike Gillespie. Good, now Chad's coming. Josh Grant, your leader, has the pressure of the rock star Makita Suzuki riders, and they are all over him. Here comes Mike Alessi. I don't think Mike wants to pass Grant, because he knows the guy's dirty, and he's going to risk it. He just doesn't want to repass passing him. He's trying to push Grant to get going. Look at this. He, he is very close. And Josh will have it, though. Wow. That was close. You saw him closing in, but Josh Grant will take the second moto win. We got the overall. We're first. Overall yeah. champion. Yeah, yeah. For the day. Honestly, I think we could have done better than we did. I mean, I'm glad we won, but uh, it, it isn't exactly kind of like what I had in mind, you know? A little sketchy ride in the second moto there with a lot of stuff going on with Grant coming off the bike and stuff. And the first moto stalling and crashing. We won. It's great, but I, I'd like it to be a little cleaner, you know? It's all right. I'm good. I'm good with it. Hangtown proved that motocross is unbiased, and even the favorite can be sacrificed, leaving the title up for grabs and everyone wanting their piece of the outdoors. Next time on The Moto, Inside the Outdoors. I think the most important thing to be aware of with regard to supercross and motocross is that it's the ultimate intersection between man and machine. Oh, and Kennard goes down! He broke his distal radius. It takes us two to three months to heal. I've been dreaming about winning a championship since the day I started racing. Obviously, we're going to manipulate the injury as much as we can because I think it's our destiny.